love it. I love it. So welcome, Jennifer Evis. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I think the timing of this is just, um, it's perfect. I, I'm so grateful to you, Elizabeth, and everybody else that you brought on board here. Um, I feel like every time I, I listen to um, this group here, I always learn something new. So I just wanna thank uh, Jane and James as well. And then also uh, Patricia who will be coming up. And so when it comes to the gift of discerning of spirits, um, everything that was already said, I mean, just, I mean, that, I, I'm like, okay, what can I add to that? So I'm going to add my angle to it and try to bring it like right where you live, hopefully, um, and bring it, bring it to what's happening to you right at this moment. That was my goal for today. And so um, as if those of you who know my story, I'll just give it to you in brief. I, I gave my life to Christ as a freshman in college, and I had a wonderful first year in the Lord. And then I got delivered of a spirit of sorcery, um, you know, very controversial at the time because supposedly uh, my church believed that you can't have that kind of problem and actually be saved. Well, I was saved. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and I did get uh, delivered from a spirit of sorcery. And so um, at, right afterward, you know, I just I didn't have the language for this. You know, looking back now, I can describe in plain language what happened. But I discovered that when you get delivered from something, that the Holy Spirit's so good and he'll give you something of his. And so he'll, he'll fill you up with something of his. And so I got that gift that James mentioned, the gift of discerning, you know, discerning of spirits, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, only I didn't know it because I didn't know how it operated. We didn't have the teaching. We didn't have the discussions. I didn't have a small group that I could go to and said, I'm feeling, I'm sensing and have any sort of wisdom uh, come back to me on it. And so all I knew is that I, I became very, very um, sensory. Uh, I felt like I was overwhelmed and I was feeling all sorts of stuff. And I, it really mimicked me medical schizophrenia, medical bipolar disorder, you know, what I understood about it at the time. And I, my family had a history of it. So I was debating if I was crazy or not. And the only thing is I did know when I, I did sense de demonic things pretty clearly. And there was some language uh, there was some discussion about that very thing in, you know, the church environments and the groups that I was in. So I began to think that maybe I just had kind of an odd form of the gift of discerning of spirits. And, you know, and so, you know, I just began to wonder about that, but I, I didn't understand it. I didn't know what to do with it. I was overwhelmed all the time. Uh, I didn't know how to distinguish what was what. Um, you know, I, I could sense the presence of the Lord. I could sense a whole lot of people's junk a whole lot of demonic stuff. And, you know, you just can't live that way. Uh, you know, it just wasn't balanced at all. And so um, what was I going to do with that? Well, I just had to lean into the Holy Spirit and let him be my teacher, not realizing he was setting me up like the rest of the panel here uh, to write the books and bring the teaching to you out of all of our experiences. I didn't know this was a divine setup uh, to do that kind of thing. And so I remember I was in a college club on the campus of um, uh, Modesto Junior College. I was in a uh, college campus club. My husband, we weren't married then. He was also in that group and we were leaders. Uh, one of our other leaders uh, who had a denominational paradigm that, that uh, excluded the spiritual. He started having these spiritual problems, you know, very big proportions. He started having this black snake uh, visit him in the middle of the night, tell him he's going to kill him. And so he was in this weird thing because his denomination didn't believe that would happen. And yet he's experiencing this. And so we're all in this meeting, we're praying for him, you know, to get free from the demonic spiritual problem that he is actually having that he doesn't technically believe could happen, but it's happening. And so what happened to me, not knowing this is the discerning of spirits in operation, I just knew the Holy Spirit. I just knew to follow him. I felt this pull to the back of the house. He was renting a room in that house. I felt this pull to the back of the house. And I'm discerning, uh, you know, the, the Holy Spirit's leading. This is all discerning of spirits. What is the Holy Spirit doing? What's God doing? What's the devil doing? What are people doing? And, and what's the wisdom in the situation? So I'm being pulled to the back of the house. And I said, hey, I said, can I go in your room? And I've never been in his room before. I didn't even know where his room was. And he's like, sure. And so I, I made a beeline for his room. There's a handful of rooms back there, but I knew by the Holy Spirit where, where he was residing. And then I went straight into his closet. Now, you know, you shouldn't do that without asking permission, but I don't know, at the time it seemed right. I went straight into his closet and I began digging through the clothes 
and I found these these uh, classic rock LPs, you know, like the, uh, I, I used to consider them the good stuff, you know, they're actually highly demonic stuff, you know, your Scorpions, your ACDC, your Guns N' Roses, you know, and so anyway, I'm pulling all this stuff out, and I said, hey, I said, here's your problem, okay, not realizing that this is the gift of discerning a spirit in operation to bring deliverance to this man, you know, they have no idea, I'm just following the Holy Spirit. And so he starts breaking these records, you know, I know we don't have these now, but he's breaking these LPs in half and all sorts of pieces. And so he, after that, he never had a problem again, that that snake never had, had a door to, to, you know, afflict him anymore. And so, uh, you know, from then on, I was just like, well, that was pretty cool, you know, and, and not knowing that this was a gift of Zernia Spirits in operation, not knowing that this was going to be a pattern in my life not just with individuals, but regionally and geographically, but I had to learn. I had to learn how to distinguish and I needed to learn wisdom. Uh, you know, uh, most of the time I didn't get caught up in the judgment and anger. I had enough junk going on in my own life that I'm like, who am I to judge you? Um, you know, but I did notice a lot of stuff and I didn't know what to do with it. And I just sought the wisdom of the Lord. And sometimes I handled it well. And a lot of times, especially in the beginning, I didn't. Okay. But but I started to learn. I started to learn what was mine and what wasn't mine. Let me give you a crazy, funny example. This one was just funny. And it actually was probably three, three years ago. I mean, it still, it still happens to me. And that's why I want to bring this to you. So you know that you're okay. All right. And so I was at the gym. I love going to the gym. It's one of my, it's one of my um, uh, ways that I keep myself level as I just, you know, exercise and keep myself, uh, you know, doing that. And I'm at the gym running and all of a sudden, this thought comes to me. And this is the gift of discerning of spirits. I uh, you know, didn't know it because it felt like it was my thought. And, but it's not a thought I normally have. And I, this thought comes to me. And it's a, it, this is what it is. It's like, I hope I don't have to get in a fight today. Now, I don't think like that. I don't, you know, I don't think like I'm going to get in a fist fight. I, I just don't think that way. But this thought kept coming to me. I hope I don't get in a fist fight today. And, uh, or I have to fight somebody today. And so I'm like, that is a weird thought. And so I started to pray into it. I'm like, Holy Spirit, I really pray that I don't have to get in a fight today. And then, you know, I pray that, I pray that whatever's going on here, you know, that, that we have a very, very good and the most, the best, most positive outcome that we can possibly have with whatever's going on here. That's, that's how I pray. And so I'm just doing my thing. I'm running. And then I go to the weight bench. And next thing I know, about 20 feet from me, these two men start arguing. And they start arguing, and it's just escalating, it's escalating, escalating. And I'm looking over at the situation, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I really hope I don't have to get in a fight today. And then my other thought was, well, I already prayed about this. What is wisdom right now? Let's just walk out. So I just walked out and avoided anything that could possibly, possibly, possibly happen. I felt that was the very best response that I could have in that situation. Because, you know, but if I didn't know, it was a gift of journey spirit, I you know, I, I might have, you know, if I was a different kind of person, I might have succumbed to something that the Lord never intended for me to succumb to. You know, he, I like what James said, you know, when you, you make your members slaves of righteousness, you know, and you practice that, you practice leaning into the Holy Spirit and all of your emotions and everything you feel, everything you sense, um, and then leaning into wisdom so you can actually minister out of it, uh, you know, and, and, and actually bring forth the kingdom of God in perhaps a very negative situation. And I'll leave you with one last story, you know, and this is how you can minister. Um, and it's very dimensional. And you learn over time how dimensional this gift is. And I had a Sears and Prophets Institute uh, at my church. And I sat at one of the tables and I was just talking with some people. We had small group time. And I looked over at a girl and I, I hear in my mind, I hear it kind of like right here. I hear a, an actual incantation. And I hear it and I'm looking at her and I'm hearing it when I'm talking to her. I thought, huh, that's interesting. And so I look into her eyes because the eyes are the window of the soul. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm looking at her and I'm like, she's not a witch. Why am I hearing this incantation? She's not a witch. And all of a sudden the knowing started happening and I knew it was her grandmother. And I just asked her, I said, hey, I said, um, I know you're not in witchcraft, but is your grandma? And she says, yeah, she is. And I said, oh, okay. I said, maybe we need to do a, a little bit of work with that because it, the residue, I, I, I felt it connected to you. And let's just kind of work through that. And so, you know, it was, it was just a very light and easy ministry time. Now, if you don't know how to handle that, you can make a big deal out of it. You can wrongly accuse somebody, uh, you know, but, but now I've had some practice. I've had some practice. I've learned not to, 
um, you know, automatically accuse people of stuff and, and put labels on people and just kind of let it sort out and really look for redemption. This is a redemptive gift. And if I can leave you with anything is to know that this gift is a redemptive gift. That's what God wants with it. Uh, yes, it does work to protect us. Um, there are snakes, there are wolves, there are principalities, all that kind of stuff happening. It does work to protect us and serve us as an individual. But really what the Lord wants is that you would, you would um, you know, know what's in the dark so you don't stay in the dark and then take it a step further, apply wisdom as he leads you to bring redemption. Uh, you won't be able to handle everything you deserve, but the things that are in your Metron, which is your sphere of authority, your assignment, uh, those things, the Lord's going to authorize some things. Um, you're going to you're going to partner with the author and create a new story in people's lives. And so anyway, I have a book, Seeing the Supernatural. Uh, it's all about this gift. Uh, just just real practical. Uh, a supernatural gift that is really practical. OK, seriously. And uh, this will help you. OK.